And I start to clap Cause I'm feeling good My room is empty Hey guys! This week we're doing a bit of a different kind of video. Mostly because I felt like working on this, but also partly because I saw a Reddit post of someone's building system that had many upvotes. In the end I ended up feeling really unsure if this was good enough for YouTube, but plenty of you wanted to see it anyways. So here we go! So, what we want to achieve is a modular way for you to implement this into your game without having to shift around a lot of stuff. And we are going to do that by using scriptable objects for our building components. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This week we are also doing things a little bit backwards since we are beginning with the UI. We have two base classes that we need here. The menu button class, which we will attach to the menu button prefab. We need to access all of these things, so for easiness sake we are going to set them in the editor. And the circular menu element, which is a serializable class we use to set the descriptions, name and icons of our elements. We can now set up our prefab, which is really simple. It's just an image component that is set to a fill it as image type. It has a child with another image component on it to hold the icon. And of course it needs our menu button class we created earlier with all the variables set from the editor. With that done, we can now dive into our user interface class. As per usual, we need to begin with caching a bunch of things at the top. Now we can focus on our initialization, where we go over our list of menu elements, which will be according to the elements in our building system, so this will be set from there. We then calculate rotation and the fill percentage according to our menu elements and then loop over them instantiating, placing and setting the buttons for each element. Then we disable our panel, which is the parent of our buttons. In update, we are checking if the user interface is active by seeing if the panel we use as a parent is currently active. If it is, we are getting the current menu element by calculating the current selection angle and the from that resulting menu index by utilizing the current position of the mouse. We then change the button to our highlighted color or the gradient accordingly. Depending on the current selection, we need to update the circle in the middle of the screen as well. Lastly, we need a function to select an element which will be triggered by clicking the left mouse button. And of course, public functions for activate and deactivate so we can enable and disable our user interface from within our building system. We now have officially created a cool looking UI that does absolutely nothing, so we should give it a task and jump into our building system. We start that off by creating our scriptable object that we are going to call building component. We are going to use this to create a multitude of different objects we can then spawn in our scene. It only needs a game object that is going to be the preview, one that is going to be the actual object, how it is spawned, as well as our circular menu element, which will let us set the name, description and icon for our object. Of course, you could just change the colliders and material once placing, but this way is way easier to explain for me. Now, our preview prefab needs a class attached to it that will help us detect whether or not we can build the object at the current position. In order to do so, our object needs to have a trigger collider. We have an int context that is zero at start, and then on trigger enter or on trigger exit, we add or subtract from this context int. That way we can then say, if context isn't zero, we can't build this object here and change the material accordingly. Now, here's also where things get a little bit rocky, as depending on which kinds of objects you want to build, you need to develop your own set of rules, like I did here with my tags. So, for example, if the preview object is a wall and the object that is hitting is a foundation, then it is fine and it should be able to build it. However, it shouldn't be able to place a wall on top of a roof. I hope this makes sense. We can now create our prefabs for which I'm getting my model and making it the child of an empty game object to ensure that I'm not spawning things that are stuck in the floor. I then add collider and rigid bodies and for the preview I add the preview class. Then I just need to create a building component which I can do from the create editor menu and set everything in there. And that is it. Okay, but now it's time to see the actual building system class. In here we first define the following variables. 
In order to have our prefab in front of us on the screen, we need to instantiate the preview game object. And after we have done that, we somehow need to show it. We are using a raycast here to detect where the current position of our preview object should be. I implemented two ways of placement here. By default, we are using a grid. This allows for easier placement by the user. However, I also integrated snapping, which I am using for placing the walls on my foundation sides. As you can see here, I detect which side to place the wall on by calculating which side has the smallest distance to my actual mouse position. Since my model's pivots aren't 100% central, I needed to come up with a way of rotating them depending on which side of the foundation they are on, which I did with this switch statement. However, please bear in mind that this might not be necessary for your models or that you might have to tweak it to make it work for your specific project. And of course, the final step is to actually place the object. And this is it. What you are left with is a nice base to tinker with and adjust it for your